Hello, Craft Mix and Craft Mix family and followers. This is the apology video that you have been waiting for. I want to start by offering my sincerest apologies to Craft Mix, to JT, the entire Craft Mix family for this horrendous misunderstanding that's happened. And I want to start by explaining some of the actions that happened and why I did the things that I did. Now, when it comes to the package being sent, I had just walked in from an eight hour day of filming content and I was absolutely exhausted. It is not an excuse by any means. However, I was tired and when I saw the package on my countertop, I asked Britt my COO, who usually handles my PR and media relations, do you know who sent this, do you know who it's from? She said, no, I haven't heard of the company and they didn't email me. So I assumed it was sent to me by finding my address off the internet. When I opened it, there was no note, there was nothing. So I assumed it was just another company that wanted to get a review. As we all know, my assistant did send them the address, as you can see in this email chain here, to my PO box. However, that is my assistant for my coaching. She's not my assistant for my PR and media relations, which is why I didn't know about it. I have just discuss this with her and in the future I've asked her to inform me anytime a company wants to send me a package for review to please speak with me first. Also when I opened the package I didn't see that it was also a mocktail company. I assumed that after reading the large print on the packaging and then having a quick look at the founders about page that they were providing cocktail mixtures and they had sent that to me as something to try as an alcoholic beverage. Totally my fault for not looking deeper onto that. It was my fault. I should have taken the time and taken a day and done it on a different day when I had more rest and had more time to look into that. So please accept my sincerest apologies for not taking a moment and seeing that. Next, Sarah and I, the social media manager for Craftsmix, had a great exchange back and forth in the comments after her response video. I acknowledge it was a very kind response and I was so sorry for the mix up. What happened after that was a snowball effect though. I had followers coming from Craftsmix that were not the nicest people in the world and they didn't see the comments that her and I had back and forth. Instead of addressing the actual review, I began to receive attacks personally on my transition, on my breast implant, on the Botox in my face and body, on the way that I looked. And it was hard to take. And so as those started pouring in in droves, of course, I took action to keep my page as positive as possible and I blocked people. I was disheartened to see that that was the response that the people were taking rather than focusing on the actual review itself. Did I block Craft Mix? I did. I run several companies and I am the one that does all the reviews for all of my coaching. I do most of the nutrition plans and I do a lot of the design for the programs and I communicate with my clients on a daily basis. I blocked Craft Mix and a lot of the followers that were coming over with negativity so that I could focus on being a shining light for my clients. I'm also a single parent. I have a daughter that I take care of and she looks to me for stability. My transition is unstable in nature and I try to be as positive as possible around her. And I'm not blaming this on my transition by any way, shape or form. This really is a fact that I'm just trying to hold positivity around my family. Being as busy as I was, I instructed my staff to please block any negative comments and filter out any negative words that would cause negative comments. And I'll go check on this later so that I could focus on business and my family at the time. Also, I do daily lives on TikTok where I answer fitness and nutrition questions and try to be as helpful as possible to anybody that has questions. The second day after the video, I was bombarded by a ton of hatred on my lives. And without understanding what was going on on Craftsmix page and why people were so upset because we had blocked everybody and because I hadn't looked at the comments, I became emotional, which again is not an excuse. And I doubled down on my review. And I'm so sorry for that. I am human and I do make mistakes. And this time emotion got in the way. Yesterday, when I took the time to go look at what Craftmix was posting, I saw JT, the founder, respond that he was going through some things with his family and that he was currently at the hospital taking care of them. I immediately messaged him and I said, JT, I'm so sorry to hear about your family. I'm wishing you and your family the best. Here is my personal cell phone number. When you have a moment, please give me a call. I'd like to resolve this as soon as possible. And because I haven't heard back, I wanted to post this video and just clear the air. Now that I've had a chance to go look at all of the videos that Craftmix has posted and their responses and see what snowballed so far. Here is my promise to you. I promise that I will not do any more reviews hastily. I promise that I will do more research on a company prior to doing a full review on them. And I promise to always continue to bring you good scientific information. That's my goal. My goal is to help and never to harm. And last, because in good scientific measure, I think it's very important that people understand why I said the things that I said about the products that are in Craftsmix ingredients. First, we should talk about fructose. And while I recognize that high fructose corn syrup and fructose are two totally separate things, and that fructose does appear naturally in fruit and other substances in nature, commercially available fructose goes through a process of isomerization. And that's where the natural molecule is chemically altered. The structure of that molecule is altered to create a different isomer. That is a process called refinement. So in essence, commercially available fructose is what's called a refined sugar. There is a growing body of scientific evidence supporting that fructose does have negative effects on the body, especially the GI tract. When it comes to maltodextrin, it is also refined. 
while classified by the FDA as natural, it does go through a refinement process as well. And it has an exponentially higher glycemic index than table sugar. This is one of the reasons that I was so adamant about the ingredients in their mixtures because millions of people depend on me that have diabetes, that have syndromes like polycystic ovarian syndrome, where the levels of glucose in the body directly affect the insulin that is secreted by the pancreas and affects their overall health. And with high glycemic index products, it can spike their blood sugar tremendously and it can be an issue for them. However, it is the dose that makes the poison. And that is one of the biggest things that I preach. Life is about balance and everyone has their own balance and I never judge you for your choices. What is important is that I help people understand that it is the cumulative effect of having massive amounts of products and processed foods in our homes and consistently ingesting, whether it has four grams of fructose in it or 10 grams of sugar or a couple of grams of maltodextrin, when you stack that on top every single day with multiple processed foods in your homes, it starts to add up. So my goal is always to just make sure that people understand that the total amount of these substances they are ingesting is what causes the issues down the road. If you enjoy cocktails, if you enjoy mocktails, I never judge you. And is one going to hurt you? Probably not. Is it the cumulative effect of ingesting tons and tons and tons of substances like this over long periods of time that's going to hurt you? Absolutely. And that's the point that I was trying to get across from the bottom of my heart. I hope this clarifies things. And I've left the first video up because I do not believe in erasing the past. We learn from our mistakes and we learn from history. If JT reaches out for me and we have a conversation and we decide it's a good thing to remove that video, I'd be happy to do it. But I don't want people to think that I deleted the video trying to get out of addressing it. Because here I am. And again, I'm so sorry for this misunderstanding. And in the end, I promise I will do better for you.